Hey friends. I had one of those out of nowhere, I guess I'd call it an insight or it's hard to call it an epiphany because I haven't like fully established what it is. But I had a, I was, you know, th there's something that I have, I don't believe I've ever spoken about it on this post, but there was a moment in my life about 15 years ago when I have a daughter who's in bed coughing. Um, I think she's okay. But I had a moment in my life about 15 years ago. It was a, a, a kind of a pivotal moment when I was deciding what to do with, like, you know, I was deciding which way to go with a couple of different options on the table. And ultimately it was the decision that I made that, that led, that took me into the, the next, through a, a theater program, a program of um, theater making, training program, two year program, highly, highly formative, deeply, deeply sort of uh, awakening in a lot of ways. And also the place I met my wife. But before I did that, I faced the decision about whether or not to enter that program. And there were a variety of reasons why it, it, it kind of almost didn't happen. I came, I came really close to it not happening. Um, there were a number of factors in my life at that point that sort of had me, had me torn, had me thinking, you know, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if that's right. Uh, having kind of a strong impulse to do this program, but at the same time, some especially intellectual reticence about it. So anyway, I, found myself weighing up what to do and a voice in my head I had one of those like you know those voices in your head that tell you this is the thing or explain something to you and I couldn't I I, I, I wasn't sure what it was it was well you know the, the truth is I get I have a handful of those voices I'm getting pretty clear on when it's the real thing and when it's just like some something that needs to be, and, and that when there's a deeper intuition underneath it and it's just a voice saying something. But this one said something like, if you do this program, you will sort out your issues with romance, with romantic love, with women for the rest of your life. You'll sort that out. And at the time, I was kind of still holding on to a previous relationship that had basically was basically over, but sort of not fully over or didn't feel fully over. And I, when I got this sort of like voice telling me what was going to happen in this program, I felt like uh, there was part of me that was like, I don't know if I want that. I don't know if I actually want that. That sounds like I might have to let go of something I don't want to let go of. 
But it also sounds like I might gain something that I really would love to gain, which is clarity and peace of mind and, and commitment, a knowledge that like, this is where I am. And I think, you know, for men, this can sometimes be, I can be a hang up for women too. Who am I to say? I, I, I'll speak as a man. The, 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 it manifests in a particular way as a man, as a heterosexual male. Um, and I, and you know, it, the, the confusion or the sort of, um, unnecessarily complicatedness of my kind of romantic orientation, my, my orientation to women at that time was, um, I don't think it was unique at all. I think it was pretty typical in some ways. But I could tell that it was something that was a big deal for me. And it was something that wasn't just, it, it wasn't, it was something that it felt like all, almost nothing else could fall into place until, until that area of my life. Not that I needed to like, meet my wife and get married and settle down. It was just like the way in which I was allowing myself to kind of be pulled around was not in alignment and it was destructive to a lot of other areas of my life. And so when this voice came through, It, I, you know, again, I had that initial reaction of like, ooh, but am I ready to stop bullshitting myself? I don't know if I am. And man, long story short, in those two years, that is exactly what I faced. First, I got even better at bullshitting myself or like really went straight for the bullshit. And then at some point I had a very powerful impulse to stop and to stop lying to myself, to stop. I mean, lying to myself is strong, but it's not actually inaccurate. It's, it was lying to myself. It was deluding myself and letting that go and giving in to something on a whole new level. It didn't all happen instantaneously. It didn't even all happen during those two years, but those two years are what set me up for that to happen and to, to leave that quandary behind forever. It's not, it's not something I intend to be confused about ever again in this life. And there's a kind of bedrock confidence that comes from that. There's a kind of self-knowledge that comes from that, from the experience of getting through the bullshit in, in any area of our life, but particularly some of the kind of big areas, you know, like our relationship to love, partnership, our relationship to our work, our purpose, if that manifests as a career, kind of all, you know, our professional life, our life relationship to the world our spiritual relationship to the whole cosmos and to our deeper self. 
right? For, I'm just naming important domains of life, but those, those are the ones. And interestingly, although I feel like I almost fully resolved that area of my life, other areas of my life have not had the same searing just 100% this is it type of, you know, total transformation or total awakening. And literally this afternoon, I was, I, I, this is, this, this kicks around my head every once in a while. I sort of like recall, you know, these events or whatever. That's what, that was happening. And then I, had this moment where my where it was like oh yeah the other areas of my life are going to do this too and it was like this rush this rush of relief <laughs> this rush of i mean in some ways it was so ho hum it was like you already know how to do this you already know how to completely quit bullshitting. So, just do that. <laughs> and, you know, in the case of, of the kind of romantic love domain of my life, It was like, it's a combination of factors, right? Like I had to be ready. I had to be willing to, willing and, and on some level desperate. I had to be, I had to have a strong intention to let go of that, of a particular kind of self-delusion and willingness to willingness to be halfway but I also had to have at least if not if not the right person which I would 100% say my wife is at least a right person to be involved in this. And so in other words, it's a, it's a constellation, right? It's not just the inner willingness, it's also the outer readiness. And when this kind of, you know, in reflecting back on this and, and kind of having remembered that this is how it went down after kind of getting this message from the universe, which is how I like to call it. After reflecting on that, it was, I mean, literally today, I was like, well, yeah. You couldn't control that. And in fact, by signing up for that process, you were sort of just, the main inner, the, the main job I had to do was just to say, I'm ready. I'm ready to change. And then the right outer components had to come into place and there had to be a resonance. There had to be a, a kind of manifestation, an outward manifestation of the end of that bullshit and the start of something real.
and nets. Nothing is just happening now. In some of these other areas in your life. It's hard to know. But the pattern of struggle and then clarity is in any way analogous, then I gotta be getting pretty close. And man, is it ever worth letting go of the delusion? Is it ever worth not continuing to live in the fantasy. That's where I am today, folks. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. more soon.